Is the loudness war over? Rene in Montreal, Canada writes, is the loudness war over? And if yes, did we win? <laughs> I had to, this, what a great question. Is the loudness war over and did we win? I love it. Great, Rene. And he, he says, maybe vinyl sound often, uh, often sounds better because of the dynamic range constriction. You know, you can't ruin the dynamics as much as with, uh, as much as you can with digital. And, and that's true. And speaking of which, I, I'm, I'm in our purchasing area. And one of our, our purchasing guys, uh, Dan, who is just, uh, I, I, I love Dan. He's, he's, I mean, look at this. Dan brings in these great, when's the last time you saw a 45 RPM record? Look at this. What do we got? Busy Body by Tiny, Tiny Hill. Green Ones and Capitol Records. Uh, Mona Lisa from Jimmy Wakely. All these great 45, uh, here's an RCA Victor. He'll have to go from Jim Reeves. Wow. That's some cool stuff. And Dan, Dan has a great little player. He, 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 you know, he just loves music and it, it, it spreads throughout the entire company. We, we are definitely are a company of music lovers, which I, I love. And Dan has this great goofy seat like this. Like, like it. The loudness wars. Yeah, no, it's, it's still being raged. It's still going on. Let me explain, because a lot of people don't know what that means. The loudness wars gosh, started back when I was in radio years and years ago. It started at radio stations. It used to be that at every radio station I ever worked at, we had these compressing limiters on the station itself. The idea was that as you scroll down the band, I mean, this was back in the days when you had a tuner for your 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 FM radio, whether it was at home or in the car, you would tune along and the loudest station would catch your attention and hopefully you'd stay and listen to it. That was sort of the beginning of the loudness war. Some of it has really uh, gotten out of hand. Even to this day, there's a local Denver station here called KBCO who used to be a great radio station. They used to really play good stuff, well thought out sets, and now they, they have what I would guess is an Orban that used to be the, 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 this Orban compressor. It's a three, uh, this was years ago, I don't know what they're using today, but it used to take, you know, high frequencies, mid frequencies, and low frequencies and separately compress them all into one mishmash of loud sound. So everything on KBCO is loud. I mean, you turn it on, it's like, whoa. And, and after a while, it gives you a freaking headache. You, you, how long can you listen to Led Zeppelin? Now that's the other thing, they play all this classic rock. The, the only thing KBCO still does that's great is once a year, they have a terrific acoustic, well-recorded CD that people stand in line uh, t to get. I mean, I, I, I'm one of those. I, it, they're, they're great. Why they can't figure out that people stand in line for this KBCO great recording with dynamics and it's well recorded and then they put this crap on it's just loud. Anyway, I will stop picking on KBCO because there are stations being bought up all over the country and that's what they're trying to do is, is loud. And recordings, these recordings, um, as bad as they were, they weren't overly compressed because the game back then wasn't to be the loudest recording. It wasn't to be, you know, shouting over everybody else so that you get heard. They did it through musicality, right? This guy is better than this guy. Why? Well, because he's musically better. He's got a better tune. It's a better melody. That used to be the way that music was competed on, and today it's just loud, loud, loud. Part of the problem is the recording studios. As we morph into a great age, one that I support, of home recording studios, the ability for people to not have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars going to a recording studio to record their music, which leaves out so many musicians 
Now we have home recording studios. You, you can buy a, a Pro Tools kit and a computer and a couple of microphones, hey, you know, a couple thousand dollars, and you're, you're, you're recording with the best of them. So that's a great change for musicians, but the downside to that is they don't know what they're doing. And so loud is better. And so they just compress the crap out of this thing and ru ruin all the dynamics. And music is about dynamics. The loud parts, the soft parts, the gentle, giving the brain a little moment to relax and kind of get into the thing and then BAM! You hit them, you know, with your impact. And that's good. That's good stuff. It's still practiced when we open our recording studio across the way over here. We will certainly practice zero compression, zero limiting. It'll all be well recorded dynamic music and we'll make it available free. If you have a lot of talent and you want a shot at being at one of the best studios in the world, we'll give you that shot for free. And we'll produce your album and sell it for you and give you a check for it. So it's gonna be a hell of a, a fun project, but that's down the road. And we're doing it because we want to reinvigorate the recording industry to show people that it can be good. It can be really good. It doesn't have to be loud, loud, loud. We don't have to shout over everybody to get our message out. You can do so quietly. You don't have to shout.